Welcome back to week nine, Fusion Monday. Today we're talking about how to use different planes so we can create sketches that are on like round surfaces. We're also gonna talk about angled planes and how to use embossing to raise text or engrave text. So here's our two for today, let's get started. So um, we're gonna start a sketch. Uh, pick a plane, and then we are going to draw a two inch diameter circle. And we are going to go ahead and extrude that to eight inches long. And that's something all of you should know by now, so I'm not going to cover that in detail. But what we're going to do is we're going to put these cylinders on the top of, um, we're going to put these holes on the top of the cylinder. Well, how do we get those holes up there? when we have a round surface. So we have to create a plane that is along the top surface and tangent to it. So if we go under construction, we're gonna to go to tangent plane. And if we select uh, near where we want the tangent plane to be, it will pick kind of the flat one or the right or the left. So you notice it got right on the top. I could also use this wheel to change the angle if I wanted to. So um, we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And then we're gonna start a sketch on this surface. We are gonna use P for project. So we press P on the keyboard. We're gonna project this line and this line onto this sketch. And then we're gonna draw a construction line from the midpoint to the midpoint. Now, if we look at the drawing over here, we'll notice that we are gonna make a half, a three quarter inch diameter circle that goes down uh, half an inch and the first one is going to be 0.75 and then an inch and a half uh, between each one so we're going to use uh, linear or rectangular patterning to do that so um, I could do this one of two ways I could put in a point and draw a hole but I'm just going to draw a circle um, on, with the center on here and it doesn't want to be in construction so I'm going to flip that off and I am going to go uh, 0.75 and then zoom in dimension from the center of the circle to right here, and we are gonna be at uh, 0.875. And then we can go ahead, and I am gonna do this within a sketch, and I'm gonna rectangular pattern this circle um, along this line. And instead of extent, I'll do spacing, and the spacing is gonna be 1.5, and we need five of these. So, and we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And I realized I had made a mistake, so let's go ahead and we'll try to clean that up here in a minute. So we hit Finish Sketch. It's not uh, eight inches long, it's supposed to be seven. So I'm gonna come back over here, right click and hit Edit Feature. And instead of nine, I believe it's supposed to be eight. There we go. And we now can extrude. So I'm gonna hit Extrude. And I'm gonna select these circles and it's gonna be negative 0.5. So you'll see now that if we look from the side that the circle kind of has a lip in there and that it's done correctly and it was on a plane along the top. So that's how you can make a tangent plane to like a cylinder in order to make features that go into the cylinder. Now we're gonna put our names, our first and our last name on the sides of the cylinder. We're gonna use the same technique tangent plane. This time I'm going to select closer to where it is. You'll notice it puts it on the side. I am going to look at that side and I'm going to use project to make, oops, project to bring, uh, oh, I got to start a sketch. Sorry. Create a sketch on that plane and then P for project to bring in this line and this line. Now, in this case, I'm going to draw a construction line at an angle from one corner to the other. And now we are gonna learn how to put text. So we have done, we need to put your name along here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create and put in text. And I am just gonna draw a text box for now. I will move it to where I need to in a minute. And I am gonna simply put my last name, all in capitals. Um, you can change the font by going here. The problem with the font is some of these fonts will not 
emboss well, especially the ones that they get um, more elaborate. So I typically tell students to stay with pretty basic fonts, Text New Roman, Arial, um, Comic Sans works, ones like that. And then we are going to make the font height um, one inch. And we are going to center it in both categories. So it's in the center of our box and in the center. Um, I'm going to have to lower my name to, from one inch to 0.75 or it's not going to fit. And then I could go ahead and click OK. And then I am going to do another construction line. And it's going to be opposite corner to corner from this one because what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to use the midpoint of this line, the midpoint of that line to line them up. So I'm going to go midpoint of this line to the midpoint of that line, and you'll notice it puts it in the center. So now we got it right where we want it. The next thing we're going to do is emboss. So we're going to hit finish sketch, and we're going to go under create, and we are going to choose uh, emboss right here. And what this will allow us to do is wrap the text around the cylinder. If we just extrude it straight in, we'd have to make it very deep to get the full S and the full T's effect. So we are going to just do uh, emboss. So we're going to select the embossing letters. We're going to select the face. And you'll notice it wraps it around the cylinder. So kind of like the way a stamp would be. See how it's wrapped around? And the amount we're going to emboss it is 0.05. Now you're going to do your name on the other side which I'm not going to show. The difference is this brings the text out. This cuts the text in. On the other side, you need to show it to me with the text cut in and your first name. Click OK. And there we go. We got our name embossed on this cylinder. So we're going to go ahead and hit Save. And oops, we need to save it into IED. And I'll come down to, oh, not IED. I'm going to do IED1 or four, and it should be saved as week nine um, T-plane and emboss. And then, of course, your last name. Oops, I, of course, did that backwards. Should be week nine, your last name, T-plane and emboss. And there you go. That one is done. Okay, uh, week nine, second part, Fusion Monday. This one we're going to talk about how to do an angled plane in order to create this angled drill uh, guide. So here we go. So the first step is we need to draw our um, the block. This should all be repetitive from previous Fusion Mondays, so I'm not going to go over in great detail, and I'm going to move pretty quickly. So it's 2.5 by 2.5 inches, and then we're going to go ahead and extrude that to uh, 0.63 inches. And um, the next step is we're going to leave out the uh, holes and the fillet and the chamfer for a little bit because we're going to put on this kind of angled piece you see right here. And that is at a 45 degree angle, which it doesn't say on the drawing, but I'll, I created this, so that's what it is. So what we need to do to, in order to create this, yes, you could draw a bunch of triangles and then get into a bunch of fillets, but it's going to cause you a bunch of problems. The easiest way to do this is to use an angled plane. So if we come up under Construct, we can go Angled Plane, and we're going to select this edge to be the edge the angles around, and then we have the ability to angle the plane, if we look at it like this, to the desired degree. And in this case, we want it to be 45, so I'm going to type that in and click OK. Now I am going to create a sketch on that angled plane, and I am going to need to go P for project to bring in just this one line. Click OK. And now I can make my uh, kind of in, or feature. So I'm going to come up, draw a straight line up, I can type in the length of uh, that line right now, which according to the drawing is one inch. Press enter. Now, here is a trick. I'm going to press line again. If I click and hold, if I move up into the right, it'll curve right into a radius, um, into an arc. We don't have to then go find an arc and draw it. And then I can come straight down. And we immediately get the shape we want. So clicking and holding provides 
an arc where if I click once and then move, I'm gonna get a straight line. Now, a couple of things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align the center here and the center there. That'll help us. Um, and then I'm gonna put a dimension on the radius of this, which is, it doesn't say. Oh, because it's not a dimension here, we are gonna put a dimension from the end of this to this line, and that is 0.875, and it's also gonna be 0.875 on the other side, which I don't need to put in because I aligned the center over the center, it automatically uh, did that. So I am gonna draw a line from across the bottom because that typically helps, and now I'm gonna go E for extrude. I jumped right out of the sketch into the thing, now here is, we're gonna learn another uh, tool today. If I go this way, it's gonna do a cut. If I just override it and say I wanna do a join, and I drag it down, the problem we have is by the time it touches up here, it starts to stick out the bottom down there. Now yes, I could click OK, start a sketch down here and just cut that away, but there is a better way. And that better way is instead of using a straight extrude, we are gonna use a distance up to object, and then I can select the surface of the object and it will only extrude down until it hits that. It's in a join, and if I click OK, we have that shape we want and nothing sticks through the bottom. Now, I'm gonna start another sketch on the surface here. I am gonna draw a circle. I believe this is a 0.375 diameter circle. Point 375, and then I'm going to use my concentric to make this arc and this circle in the same place. And then I'm going to extrude this all the way through. It's going to be a cut, so I'm going to get it moving in the cut direction, and the distance is going to be all. And there we go. So now we have this is the challenging part of the uh, week nine, part two, but um, the rest of this is pretty much straightforward of other projects we've done. So we need to put in four holes. So I'm gonna start another sketch on this surface. And I am gonna use a center justified rectangle in construction. And if I drag it out and I go 1.88 tab 1.88, I now have the four corners. So then I can just jump into holes and I can select the holes here, here, here and there. That was really quite simple. And then I can change the hole. It's gonna be a countersunk hole. It's gonna have a top countersink of 0.55. Um, it is at 82 degrees. The diameter of the hole that goes through down here is 0.375 and the distance is all. And now I have my four countersunk holes. I need to put some fillets on this corner this corner, it's not gonna let me grab that, so let me, that one, spin it around to the back and grab this one, and those fillet diameters are point, I'm sorry, radiuses are 0.25, and then we can throw up the chamfers that it's asking for, and it is asking for modify chamfer, this edge here plus this edge here, and that chamfer is 0.05. Okay, and there is our, uh, I believe I called it, well, it's called the angle plate. It's a drill guide is what it is. So you can drill an angle at, a, at an angle. So through a piece of material, but there you go. That's uh, week nine. We go ahead and hit save. And this is W9 angle plate. And your last name. So and hit save. There you go. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.